Oh, welcome to trust the process. So before we go to question three, which is the last question of tool sheet one, let me just talk a little more about the parallel connection of the springs. So the parallel connection of the springs can appear in two cases. You can have a vertical arrangement as well as the horizontal arrangement just like the the series one so this is the vertical and then that is going to be the horizontal like that so this is the force now if we say this is the first one this is first spring spring one is this one So that is 1, this is going to be 2. So this is going to have a spring constant K1. That is going to have a spring constant K2. Same applies to this, 1, 2, then this is K1, that is K2. Alright, so if the effective force here, the effective force is that we, we cannot make an assumption to say these springs are going to have the same effective force. The effective force for the parallel arrangement is going to be the force in spring 1 plus the force in spring 2. And from the, the restoring force, we know that the magnitude of the restoring force is just Kx. So we are going to have the effective, the effective spring constant here replacing the forces by this the effective spring constant multiplied by the effective extension which should be equal to the spring constant 1 multiplied by the extension 1 plus spring constant 2 multiplied by extension 2 now this is the standard formula for the parallel connection but a rough assumption can be made which is these two springs are going to have the same extension that is just the assumption but if you encounter a question you can use this as the formula under parallel connection now if you assume to say or if the question is assuming to say they are having the same extension meaning the effective extension will be equal to that you can say the effective uh, the effective spring constant is just equal to k1 plus k2 directly this is for the parallel connection with the assumption that there is going to be the same extension so that is for parallel connection and then we have uh, the effective just a recap the effective being equal to k1 multiplied by k2 over k1 plus k2 this was for the series <coughs> this series connection so here the assumption is that the extension is the same and then there the assumption is that the force is the same all right let's go now to question three question three is coming from deformation of solids which is a very very short topic in cell even if you go to cell you just find that it's having not even more than a page all right so what is it that you have to know about deformation of solids um, i will explain most of the things as we tackle this question so the question reads a wire of length 1.70 meters hangs vertically from a fixed point as shown in figure 9.9 .9. the wire has a cross section area of 5.74 times 10 to the negative 8 meters squared and is made of a material that has a young modulus 
of 1.60 times 10 to the 11 pascals. A load of 25 newtons is hung from the wire. Calculate the extension of the wire. Now, what you have to know about deformation of solids is that there is when you are when you apply a certain amount of pressure on an object you can cause that object to change either in shape length or volume so if that change is caused we can say the object has been deformed there has been a deformation in that object which is caused by the amount of pressure that was exerted. So the pressure that you exert to cause a certain type of deformation is nothing other than a stress. So it's more like you're exerting some stress into a material and that stress is what is going to cause deformation. So stress stress in the material which is denoted by sigma is just given by the force over area that's why i'm saying stress is just the pressure that you that causes deformation so the force per unit area that causes deformation is what we call stress and then the measure of deformation that is caused the measure of the deformation caused by this stress is what you call strain. So strain is denoted by epsilon and it is given by... Now this strain is going to differ according to the type of deformation that you have. You can have deformation in length, deformation in uh, maybe shape, deformation is also volume. Okay, so this is going to differ in terms of uh, the type of deformation. The formula for this is going to go according to the type of deformation that you have. So since here we are talking about the deformation lengthwise, that's why we are finding the extension. The When deformation is in length, you are going to have change in length over the original length as your strain. Okay? If the deformation is in volume, we are going to have change in volume over the original what? the original volume, just like that. Now, for small stresses, we can say that stress is directly proportional to strain. There's a condition there. We are saying for small stresses, stress has to be directly proportional to strain, meaning uh, stress should directly be proportional to what? Strain. And the proportionality constant here is going to be the elastic modulus. The elastic modulus is also going to differ according to type of the type of deformation that you have. So if the type of deformation that you have is in length, this becomes the young, the young modulus. If the, the type of deformation is in shape, becomes the shear modulus. If the type of deformation is in volume, it becomes the bulk modulus. So just like this, the general case, it is just the elastic modulus. Okay? So the expanded form of this formula is uh, force over area for stress is equal to the elastic modulus. Then we say change in L over the original length. So if you use, the moment you just use change in L over the original length, then even the elastic modulus has to be specific. You are dealing with the deformation in length. And how do you know that? Here a wire of some certain length is vertically hanging. So we know that we are told to find the extension, meaning this wire is going to be deformed lengthwise. Now, let's do the data collection. According to... According to this, what is it that we have? What have we been given in the question? And what is it that we want to find? So what we have been given here, a wire of length. So the initial length has been given. The initial length is 1.70 meters. 
then we also have um, the cross section area the cross section area is 5.74 times 10 to the negative 8 meter squared we also have uh, the young modulus of that material is 1.60 times 10 to the power 11 pascals then we've also been given the force which is 25 newtons so from this formula clearly you can see that we have the force the area the young modulus and the original length hence we can find the extension the extension is now going to be the change in length that is going to be the extension so just a matter of making this subject of the formula when you make this subject of the formula you are going to have change in length which is the extension should be equal to the force multiplied by the original length over the area multiplied by young modulus and everything here has been given so it is just a matter of you getting these values and these values are already in their standard units plug them into this formula and find the answer which is going to be in meters just like that all right